and it listened to me. It walked out of the thicket, it turned around and looked at me. They looked up and in this tree, there was a monkey man. And the monkey man jumped down out of the tree and started running away. And suddenly they're right in front of the car. He slams on the brakes and manages to stop. And he's skidding because it's not quite, you know, um, gravelling. And for, literally for about a second and a half, they just stood there because they don't know where to go. And you tell them panicking, you know, like roof dropping. And their, their, their face is like twitching. Bigfoot Society. This is your host, Jeremiah Byron. Every week I talk to different people in the cryptozoology field. You never know who's going to be on next week. If you'd like to sponsor the show, head on over to patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society. You get access to a ton of things there, including a close-knit cryptid community on Discord where you can connect with like-minded cryptid researchers and enthusiasts, weekly bonus content, the ability to hang out with each week's guest after the main show, exclusive merch, and much, much more. In this episode of the Bigfoot Society podcast, we are able to talk to Mr. Todd Hale from the Olympic Project based out of the Pacific Northwest. Uh, This is a really fun interview talking about some Bigfoot incidents from Todd's past and also some very recent stuff with the Olympic Project as well. You're really going to love this episode. Sit back, relax, enjoy my conversation with Mr. Todd Hale from the Olympic Project. All right, Big for Society, uh, we've got Mr. Todd Hale uh, from the Olympic Peninsula, the Olympic Project, here to hang out tonight. How's it going, Todd? Good. How are you doing? Dude, I'm I'm doing good. I've, I'm psyched to have you on. Tried to chat with you for, for quite a while. And it, it was ever since I saw, uh, of course, you know, uh, Discovery, uh, the movie that uh, that Seth came out with. And like yeah. your line where it's like uh, he's asking everyone, like, what's your specialty? And I believe the quote <laughs> is, what do I bring to the table? I don't know. Uh, but they saw something in me and I'm like, that guy's got more to his story because he's yeah. yeah I was like, I got to talk to Todd. I, I just uh, that was a good movie. And uh, I feel like you got some stories. So tell me, man, what does the audience need to know about you? Well, they gave him a legitimate answer, but of course they cut it, right? <laughs> oh, they I'm did? Sure you didn't have to mess with me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they gave man. him a real answer. <laughs> but of course, uh, yeah, they probably were messing with me. Movie magic. There you go. Yeah. That, that was a long day of interviews. They interviewed everybody in there for 30 to 40 minutes. Wow. So those little tiny bits of interview, it's, it's a long process. That's so, wild. I'm sorry. I, what was the original question then? So the the question is, so uh, for for let's say listeners where they're like, I don't know Todd Hale, I don't know the Olympic Pro- what the what do the listeners need to know for background before we start chatting about stuff so they're not completely lost, I guess. Oh well, I've been into the subject for a long time since I was uh, as far back as I can remember, a kid with the PG film and in search of, and all the old documentaries from the 70s. I was born in 71, so. Okay. Those were those were on TV a lot when I was a kid, and uh, I've been checking out books at the library in elementary school, and I did a lot of hiking and camping as a kid, and in the Sierras, trout fishing, camping out in the desert. I was a SoCal kid. I grew up pretty close to the beach. Okay. And um, I was just always into the subject, always looking for stuff. And in a 1986. In Southern California, I had a possible sighting. Uh, I was 15 years old with oh, some wow. friends of mine and my brothers, and and um, I wasn't too much into it as a teenager and early 20s. But I started getting back into it as a young adult, reading more books with some some of the documentaries coming out in the in the 90s. And I decided I wanted to actually try and go look for this thing myself and see what I could come up with. Cause I still, even after that possible sighting and the books, I was fully on board, but then 
there's periods of time where I'm like, hey, we would have had one by now. I mean, what what's really going on with this? I want to find out for myself. Mm. So I, I went to a conference um, in 2008 with Tommy Amarone. I met him. He introduced me to a lot of people. I met a lot of California BFRO people at that conference. And okay. that's kind of where it took off. Wow. What conference was that? That was Bigfoot Discovery Days 2 at Mike Ruggs Museum in Felton. Wow. That is cool. I met, I met a lot of prominent Bigfoot people that day and um, wow. made some connections for Southern California and, and the rest is kind of history. <laughs> That's awesome. And so how did you get, uh, how did you get hooked up with the, the Olympic project guys? What's, what's the story behind that? Um, <clears throat> through social media, I was still in Southern California. I okay. contacted Shane I think it was before Monster X when he was doing his other show. Uh, I think it was called Cryptologic Radio. And we talked on the phone and um, I knew knew him from just Facebook, you know, social media stuff. But I, I moved up to Washington for a job. People think I moved here for Bigfoot, but I didn't. I moved here for a job and I got invited to Beachfoot. I went to Beachfoot nice. in 2016. Um. I met the OP people. I met Derek. I knew Shane from those social media, but obviously meet someone in person is different. Exactly. And I went on an expedition in 2017 and Derek maybe a member right in that time, like five years ago. That is awesome. Oh, so my just, I That's... just kind of, I, I just kind of fell into it. It was really fast, you know, from the time I moved to Washington until I was an OP member was um, a year or whatever it was. But I, I'd already been researching in California and I knew Bart, Coutinho and some other people. Exactly. In California. Right. So it just kind of, everything just kind of happened real fast. Oh, that's awesome, dude. It's like just uh, some weird circumstances along the way and like getting set up with the right people. And it's, it's a very, it, I mean, it is all about who you know. And like stuff, uh, you know, being able to go to Beachfoot, stuff like that. That's really cool. Um, I was yeah. looking through your Instagram earlier because why not? It's awesome. And uh, <laughs> so I got a few questions that are not Bigfoot related, but I think they're, okay. it could be interesting. So what's your favorite beer? Because you seem like you are a beer aficionado on uh, on the gram. Brand beer? Yeah. Or type of beer? If oh. you could have any beer like that, you know, what what is your your top beer that you love? This one's pretty good. My favorite brewery is Stone. Okay, Stone. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I have a little fridge down here in my office. Um, yeah, I post a lot of beer pictures. I started that years ago, and I just never really stopped. People awesome. probably think I'm an alcoholic or I drink a lot, but I really don't. <laughs> I just post pictures of the beer I drink on Fridays it, or okay. Saturdays. <laughs> That's I don't right. drink. I don't drink during the week because of my job is way too hard. I don't want to feel like crap. So I got you. I got you. Good call. Uh, you also seem to be a huge aficionado of eighties bands. What is your favorite eighties band? Metallica, of course. Okay. Is there right. any other 80s? Uh, I love Iron Maiden too, but yeah, we're talking metal, man. I love metal. All right. I like, I like country that's not on the radio. So like uh, your old school country, like uh, outlaw country stuff. A little bit of that. A little okay. more traditional. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, nice. but I, I, I liked. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty much a metalhead through the '80s and. Nice. Yeah, I love awesome. Iron. I love Iron Maiden and Metallica. I love that's, it. Do that's you, my generation. <laughs> I still uh, listen to them today. Do you blast yeah. any uh, Metallica or anything when you're out squatching, or or save that stuff for home? No, man. We. Right. I don't play any music camping on those trips. It's. It's doing those Bigfoot trips is not like, um, not like a normal camping trip where people are blasting music and screaming and yelling. It's completely different because you have audio rolling. Oh, sure. And yeah, there's no, we don't do screaming. There's no music. I mean, it's, it's pretty much just by the fire or by your vehicles and, and listening for stuff. It's, it's not like you would think. I, I mean, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, it's nah, no music's playing. 
So, yeah, because some people, they, they take a, a certain viewpoint where, like, if I do something weird, that's going to bring Squatch in. Like, I've, uh, you know, uh, friend Tate is like, hey, let's play video games or maybe I'll play some Rush on my bass. <laughs> yeah, and, I heard yeah. him say that. <laughs> yeah, or no, I, but... I saw him playing a bass out there with a little amp. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's good no, stuff. I don't do any i don't do anything like that each to the, each don't. to their own for sure yeah. um my friend uh jonathan easley from western bigfoot exploration uh, <laughs> i was you know who i'm talking about he's like yeah. um he's like ask todd what happened in the sierras yeah we well, figures he would ask that yeah are you familiar with the barcatino thermal footage uh i am but do you mind summarizing it for our listeners in case they're not Okay, um, people must people might or might know about Justin Smea and the supposed Sierra Kills and yep. the Sierra site. Um, we went up there. I they were going up there doing some Bigfoot stuff, and Rosa Hebe was making this little documentary, and um, I've been in contact with those guys. I already knew Bart. But I wasn't in on the Sierra site stuff in the beginning. And Ro and I shared a ride, basically just to split gas money. We're going to drive up there real quick okay. for a one-nighter. And it's for, it's like 12 hour, a 12-hour drive. We went up there for a one-nighter so he could shoot some B-roll footage. And and I <clears throat> we had to find out from Justin and, and Bart if I could even go because they don't want a lot of people to know where the place was. But... Sure. I got the okay. I went. We were hanging out there in the day. Um, I just wanted to go just the I mean, who wouldn't want to go? I wanted to check the place out. I wanted to go through Justin's story in person and totally just see kind of the lay of the land and where this happened or where this happened. And so we were there that day and there was a lot of deer hanging out. It was it was a very it was a weird, weird day as many deers were were hanging out uh, close to us and in our camp and so <clears throat> the sun starts going down we're waiting for sean evidence to show up there he was going to get there around 10 at night and uh bart went and got sean he saw like uh, a herd of deer like 30 headed deer which is oh, wow. crazy i mean there yeah there was a ton of deer up there later that night they're doing calls and screams and you know nothing's really going on it's kind of quiet um mike a guy named michael lawrence was there he went to bed justin's on a cot in front of us in the fire or next to the fire not in the fire <laughs> ro and i are sitting at <laughs> the fire yeah and uh <laughs> bart's bart is like we're winding down we're getting ready to go to bed and and Bart's like, you know what? Let's, I'm going to take Sean for a night walk. Just like one last walk and then we'll hit the sack. Okay. So they go for a night walk. And while they're gone, Ro and I start seeing stuff in the trees. And we heard a whistle in front of us. And we start seeing movement way up in the woods up here in this ridge. And then we start seeing movement straight in front of us in the trees. And He's like, do you see that? You know, there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. So fast. This is a super abbreviated version. So fast forward. Bart comes down and he's like, hey, guys, did any of you get up and walk up here in the woods? We're like, no, something oh, is right wow. there in the trees. He's like, I think I'm I think I'm filming squatches. And I'm like, we know it, all this is on audio. And I'm pointing. I'm like, they're right there. They're right there. And he's like, Put your wow, hand don't point, don't point. I don't want to, I don't want him taken off. The reason he came down is because his batteries had died in the thermal and he came down to get to change the batteries. So he woke Justin up and he's like, Justin, Justin, I think I'm filming squatches right up here in the trees. And Justin's like, yeah, I told you they're here. You want the <laughs> rifle? Oh, yikes. And he's like, Sh he's like, shoot him. And I'm like, what? This guy's crazy. You know, I'm thinking, shoot him. Because Bart's like, there's there's more than one. Wow. Because two of them crossed the tree, you know, the same tree gap. Like one went across, and then you see another one go across. So that's a minimum of two. 
Wow. So Bart's trying to therm from down by the fire, but he can't see anything. They're behind the trees. They're hiding behind the trees, and these trees are huge. So he goes back up around, starts filming, and they're still there. So Ro and I are freaking out. I mean, it was Man. the scariest night of my life. I mean, wow. We're just sitting there. The fire was really tiny. We were keeping a really small fire so it could just put your – I could put my hand like this and still see yep. the woods. Okay. The, like a four-inch flame. It's really small. And the things just kept moving and moving, and you could see it. And I was thinking, man, if these things are as intelligent as everyone says they are, what if they recognize Justin? What if – at that time, I didn't have a lot of woods time. I'm like, what if these things are going to come in on us? Yeah. I, mean, I started thinking, like, where's the nearest hospital? What if something goes <laughs> on? Like, we're far from civilization. Yeah, dude. And, I mean, it was crazy. You could hear, I heard walking on the road. You could hear. Wow. Um, I heard footfalls to the left of us on the other side of Sean's vehicle. So at the end of the night, Bart comes back down. Oh, I heard um, a weird sound too. I didn't know what it was, but during that time when it, it was getting later and later and this thing, it kept going on, they were hanging around our camp and we were feeling surrounded. I mean, the most vulnerable feeling okay. I've had in my life was there wow. that night. So I heard a weird sound. It was like, boom, boom. And I could not figure out what was that sound? Wait, what was that? So it ended up being when he, when Bart sent me the thermal footage, we got home. It was Monday. I'm going through the footage. There's a there's one that throws a rock, like a baseball pitch, and it hits the tree, and it hits the tree and lands on the ground, and that's the exact cadence of the sound I heard. I was on the phone to Bart. Hey, that's the sound I heard. That's the sound wow. I heard. It was that rock hitting the tree and landing on the ground. There was another one that that lobbed a rock down to the right of Bart. There was a lot going on. Um, I, I still have all, all my notes. I still have all the footage. That's wild. Basically, they they ended up exiting the same way they came in, to our left. And Robert Leiderman, in the, in the investigation they did with mm -hmm. Kip Morrow, Robert Leiderman, a lot of people went up there to do the investigation. I didn't go up there. Yep. Bart's text to me all the information. They're trying to figure out how tall these things were, how big they were, you know, where they were exactly. And and Leiterman's the one that it it really turned him around. Think there's no mm -hmm. other explanation for these these thermal images in these places because they were standing on stumps or standing on ice chests. Wow. These things are a lot bigger than people, you know, wider, bigger. Mm -hmm. They none of them were very tall except one. The the tallest one was like a sentry watching all this going on. And he was like a large male. And I think that's the walking I heard on the road in the beginning of that event. Cause that event lasted like an hour and a half. And they, wow. so when they ended up leaving, they exited the same way they came in to our left and through the meadow behind us. And we didn't know. Okay. okay. And, um, Leiderman's the one that saw they're walking behind me in a row. Oh, man. Out that way when we're still at the fire. So at the end of the night, it's late. Bart's like, let's act like we're going to bed. Hopefully they mm -hmm. come in and I'll film them close. Because he was far away. It was like 90 or 100 yards away. And the thermal footage is, you know, not great because it's too far away. But it's time to go to bed. I had a tent set up behind Rose truck. And Rose, like, are you going to get in that tent? I'm like, no, I'm not getting in the tent. I'm <laughs> right. getting in the truck totally. with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. that day, we found a track right in front of where Roe was parked. Oh, and no. And they had casted 15-inch tracks in that area, too. Oh, There's three God. sizes, like a, a small, medium, and a large size they were finding and casting. So I said, no, I'm getting in the car with you because we we're right next to the tree line. My door and I said, if they come in and start messing with us, messing with us in the car, yeah. we're out of here. Wow. I go, you're starting that car, and we're getting the we're F out of here. <laughs> I could not wait for the sun to come up. I'll tell you, I want to get out of oh. there that night. But 
Dude, there you go, that Jonathan. Is, that is wild. There That's you go, the Jonathan. Very Weasley. abbreviated version. That's the quick version. Oh man, thanks for sharing that, Todd. I wanted so I can already tell this this hour is going to go by quick. Uh, you mentioned before our interview started is that so you were actually out in the the woods today, and yeah. you had brought up that like, uh, hey, why don't I share some stuff that happened today? And I say, let's uh, let's go for it. Okay, well, nothing happened uh, Bigfoot wise. Yeah, Chris, Chris Spencer and I were out on a scouting trip today up by Greenwater nice. off the 410. You know, it's up in the Cascades. Okay, and um, we drove. We went ahead and drove over to Bumping Lake. Aha! Uh-huh. And de- deployed some audio somewhere over over there. I don't know if I'm supposed to say the the B Lake word, but everyone seems to know about it these days. So. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't think no, it's a problem we, since it's uh, a, it's a documentary name Greenwater, that's coming right? out Some soon. Stuff yeah. to me in 2015, oh, okay. I want okay. to take Chris there and show him. Yeah. Oh man. Oh okay. I I try to have tough talk about that place because there's so many people there, but I think everyone knows about it now. It's not but, a secret, Todd. It is so not Chris a secret. So Chris and I were just driving yeah. around the Cascades on Uh-oh. some forest roads up there. Okay. I did want to ask you. So let's say there is, um, let's say there's someone listening. Okay. They're getting ready to go on a, okay. a Bigfoot uh, uh, research expedition. It's their first time. Um, do you have any? Uh, do you have any advice on, like, what kind of gear they would want to have uh, going out into the woods? Some waterproof boots. <laughs> okay. All right. So you're saying waterproof boots and uh, what other things were you saying? Well, here in Washington, you need waterproof gear, waterproof boots. You okay. need bug spray. Okay. <laughs> you're yeah. going to need a nice tent with a nice rain fly. Okay. Because uh, a lot of the trips we go on, it will be raining. And if it's not raining, you wake up in the morning, everything's wet anyway from all the, you know, condensation and everything. Oh, so, sure, yeah. I mean, it's you will be wet. Uh, you want to make sure and try and stay dry and warm. It's it's a completely different climate up here. When I moved here, I had to buy different types of clothes and everything. It's so much different than California, obviously. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, a, a nice audio recorder wouldn't hurt. A Tascam DRO5X is a good way to start it's like 100 bucks yeah. this i way. was gonna ask you because that's what chris spencer uh recommended and i was gonna i was gonna ask you if that's a, so it's the same thing that chris has i i think it's the same yeah. model that he said yeah he's got like five of these i have two okay and i have other recorders i have like five recorders total but these are my two main ones i use on our trips okay. i'll put one near closer to camp and one further from camp um nice i don't know if you're talking about gear like night vision or thermals i yeah don't, totally yeah, yeah i have a little um the little tiny fleer the little 600 dollars one okay. whatever the scout it's yeah. not great at all i mean it's the only reason i got it is because it was so cheap and i'm cheap yeah. but um i'm getting ready to actually actually invest in a nice, nice thermal because i'm tired of things happening and i can't see it Totally. Because I didn't, I never bought a thermal before because it's not proof. People are going to take it as proof. But I've had so many things happen in the last couple of years, and I really want a thermal. And it's very frustrating. But as far as gear goes, you need to be prepared for the weather here because you could be in August and it's 86 to and rain on you, and you have to be ready. Wow. Especially That's in Washington. Wild. Mm. Uh, specifically about the task. Slept in task wet, camp. wet sleeping bags. Oh, yeah. No, go ahead. Oh, go man. Ahead. Um, specifically about the task cam. What is it that uh, you really like about that model? Is it like just how cheap it is, or are there specific uh, features about it? I'm the wrong person to ask about that. The only reason gotcha. I bought them is because Chris <laughs> recommended them. And awesome. And I set it up to Chris's settings and that's it. I just, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I put new cards, put new batteries and okay. I've been using those for 
years. And I don't even put them in a Ziploc bag or anything. I just put them out and out under um, some bark or under some moss. And they've been okay. pretty much bulletproof the whole time. I've been using them for years. I highly recommend them. Do they hold up to uh, to rain then, or these have? Uh, they've been really wet plenty of times, though. Wow. Somebody else may not want to do that, but <laughs> right. Chris will put them in a Ziploc bag, and then okay. um, he'll have just the mics out, and he'll electrical tape. Like the Ziploc bag will have a, a hole in it right here, and then mm. he'll just tape the mics kind of out in the rain. Oh, wow. But I, I literally just put these out face down because there's a red light, and the squatches seem to be attracted to that red light regardless. But Do you think so? Those things have been really good. I've had them okay. wet plenty of times. Nice, yeah. nice. You were mentioning that you wanted to get a higher model so, of a thermal. Um what it what uh what device are you are you looking into getting uh, that you said was costing a little bit more? I think it's a Pulsar Hellion, okay, uh, XP two Pro or something like that. They're around nice. four grand. Oh my goodness! But wow, <laughs> it just kills me. But I've Whew. I've used I've borrowed those in the field and they are incredible. Really. Oh, so man. they're they're definitely in the higher end. There's there's people out there that have a lot more expensive thermals. Let's talk about let's talk about this. Uh, so I'm sure most people that are watching this have watched, uh, you know, um, uh, Discovery by uh, by Seth that talks all about the uh, the OP. Um, but can you describe like uh, uh, what's it like? <sighs> Can you describe maybe in your own words what going out into that area is like and just if you have any thoughts about it? Because I think it's it's fascinating to find out more about that area where the nests are. Um, the area where the normal area is, because we've been down in the area so many times, there's almost like an established trail, hmm. but it's still hard to get down. You're stepping over stuff you're crawling under stuff it's not easy by any means there's a lot of people who just they flat out couldn't make it but when you're going into a newer area like we're exploring for new nests it is brutal it is we don't use machetes or we're not busting through okay we're not knocking the stuff down we're trying to keep it intact so you're basically just pushing this stuff out of your way and you're going up going up these ridges down these ridges and it's really difficult. It's hard. Last time I did it, I hurt my knee. Really? It was uh, no, no fun at all. But that's where you have to go to find these things. That's true. Um, last time we were out, we actually found a track way back in that fixed stuff. Oh, wow. <clears throat> were you able to it cast like it? Or? Thing, the impression was so deep. It looked like this thing had jumped out of the jumped out of the tree. Yeah. Yes. So the way the impression was, it looked like it landed on its heel and then rolled its foot and took off. Wow. Chris Chris casted it. We have the cast. Okay. Um, we've casted a lot of stuff in there, including handprints from when Shane and I walked in the that nest being built in 2020. Mm. Oh, that is crazy. Is there, has there been a time where you've been out, you know, on a OP field expedition and something happened where it's like, it almost made you think like, this is nuts. Why am I here? It sounded like you had an experience like that in the Sierras, but did something that really freaked you out happen also uh, with the OP at all ever? Yes, but not not in the OP in Central Washington on a different expedition. Okay, that's um, it's it's in the film a bit. They played the audio of the tree being pushed over. Oh yeah, yeah, this yeah. Big loud tree crash. That night was like my second scariest night of my life, and. Mm. I've spent a lot of nights in the woods and tents since I've moved here, especially a lot, a lot. 
you know, and most of the time it's pretty mundane. There's not a lot going on. And sometimes it just gets crazy. And, um, you know, they're around, they're making themselves known. They're whooping, they're knocking, uh, pushing trees over this camp. This particular place has a long history of Bigfoot activity right there. Okay. That's why we were there. And they've been at camp several times. Now, the naysayers will say, well, I wasn't there those other times. I've only been... That's the night that Rebecca, <clears throat> Rebecca didn't say it exactly in Seth's film, but one walked into camp. And walked right in between her and the tent we were staying in. Really? And and um, I have audio of it walking up to my recorder. Like I talked about, these recorders emit a red light. And yeah. even if you put it the light down and c- cover it with moss, I think they can see it. It's mm. still emitting like a glow. It's, if, especially if you have like, um, if they can see at night like we think we can, they can. Because Shane has recorded him walking up to his recorder. Chris has it. Chris has had him messing with the recorder. And I've had him walking up to my recorder. And they just hang out. And they'll stand there for like five minutes. And then they walk away. And it's the same MO. We've all recorded it. So the night of the tree fall, my recorder was about 60 feet from the fire. Okay. The direction of the tree fall. And it it. Hours before the tree fall, it walked up to my recorder. You can hear it. And it stood there. I know it was watching us at the fire. Because we were just standing on the fire, just Man. just talking, you know, our normal talking and messing around. And and I, I didn't really expect anything. Most, I didn't expect anything to happen. I'll tell you, most of the times you go out on these trips, I never expect anything to happen. Because there's a lot of trips where nothing happens. It's just quiet. It's just normal woods. But then once in a great while, it gets crazy. And that's, that's keeps you going. It's awesome. Dude, that's, it, it's, it's so wild because it's like, I hear all these stories and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, what else? It, it's just, it's so crazy. The stuff you hear and it's like, what else could be doing that? There's, there's no explanation, you know, like. Everything. I mean, Everything you hear about Bigfoot, like the the whoops, the knocks, the screams, the foot pads on a road, I've experienced all that many times. Wow. And I have nothing I have nothing to prove it, just stories. So there there is some stuff. I mean, obviously we have audio. Audio is audio, but right. Unless you see the animal doing it, you know. Ugh. People on Facebook or different social media, well, how do you know it's that? You didn't see the animal make the noise. Well, there's a pattern. And obviously, you have sonic visualizer. And there's frequencies. And Chris, Monongahela, and David Ellis, they can all recognize all the animal signatures. Chris, mm. Chris doesn't even have to hear an animal. I can send him a picture from my phone of the spectrogram on my computer, and he can tell me pretty much what animal it is. Really? That's how much audio he reviews. He knows exactly wow. what animals look like on the spectrogram. They all have their own signature. So has he has he identified what did did let's say do Bigfoot have certain uh spectrogram because you guys have seen so much audio? Um has have you started to see patterns with like the same sort of you know spectrogram uh uh visual from Bigfoot? Uh, calls or anything of that yeah 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 but there's a there's a trade secret to that that i can't talk about (laughs) that there is something (laughs) there oh i love it i love it oh man so that's cool because i'm sure because maybe that'll be released someday hopefully uh there's if not this the secret that i I just recently found out about this 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 secret this trade secret on a Bigfoot signature. Those those other guys don't want getting out because they don't want people hoaxing it, trying to hoax it. Oh, Which I wow. don't think people could hoax it anyway, unless they're playing a Bigfoot recording. But 
that's the thing. Yeah. Um, this is why I want to go find all this stuff myself because mm-hmm. you have to take people's word and the things I'm telling you tonight, I would appreciate if people took my word, but obviously they don't have to, they don't have to believe me. And that's why I started doing everything myself to figure it out myself. That's what I encourage people to do because when, when you're there and you know, there's no one else in those, those woods with you and these things go on, those those things you've recorded or the things you've heard with your own ears or seen or tracks you cast, you know they're it's it's not a hoax. So there's no people hoaxing you. It's yeah. yours. Oh yeah. And that's all I've ever that's all I've ever cared about. I'm I'm chasing down I want a full daytime sighting. Mm-hmm. I want to look into the thing's eyes. And I've been chasing that for years. Yeah. What do you and, think? And it still hasn't happened. It's a matter of time. Yeah. Well, I mean, it seems like you're in the best possible area uh, for it to happen and that it will happen someday. If you keep being persistent with going out with the OP, you would think that it will happen, you know? Oh, yeah. You know yeah. how much field time Derek has and some of the stories he's got? I know he's got stories. I haven't talked to him yet, but I know he's got wild stories. Yep. 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 And so does Shane. So does Chris. Oh, yeah. Chris has some... Mm, Let me think about this. Yeah, don't tell any stories of some other... Because (laughs) that that I found is a thing where that's an unspoken rule within Bigfoot researchers is you don't tell the other guy's stories because you don't know what they don't want being said. Yeah. 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 So good call. Good call. But Mm. there's enough, man. I'll tell you, there's, there's uh, enough going on. If there was nothing going on, you spend all these years doing this. I wouldn't keep wasting my time. Right. Because it's a lot of time off work, a lot of expense, a lot of gas, a lot of equipment. You know what I mean? I got you. Yeah. I got you, man. It's it's a huge I, uh investment. Well, I love doing it. It's it's awesome. Okay. Yep. I'm gonna bring you back in and all right, you're back. Cool. <laughs> oh dude, God. internet is being wild tonight, man. I love it. Uh let me there we go. I got you. So you know. In your personal opinion, what do you think it's going to take for Bigfoot to be accepted, you know, as an actual creature, uh, you know, nationwide, maybe by science, maybe by, you know, the general populace? Well, unfortunately, I think it's going to take a body. Yeah. And it's been that way. Yep. I don't, I, I suppose I'm not up on all the latest DNA stuff, but if, if you, if, all these DNA tests keep coming back as contaminated human or, or human. Mm-hmm. I've just wondered all these years if that was actually the thing we're chasing and it's that close to human that it comes up as human. But like I said, I'm no expert. I, you, you're going to have to take a body or pieces of one and slap it on a table Yep. because I think you hit these scientists upside the head. Here's one right here. You know, it's frustrating. Luckily, this younger generation of scientists, primatologists are more open to it. I think yeah, the, the door has been opened a bit with different people, but they still have to stay underground for fear of repercussions at their job, which I think is crap. It's crazy. I get to deal with it at my job, and I'm not even a scientist. <laughs> you know? Right. I get, I get crap from people at work. I've had people at work tell me, you might want to you might not want to talk about the Bigfoot stuff at work. I said, I wow. don't. People are coming to me with it. That's wild, dude. And I work in construction. It has nothing to do with any of right. it. It's like, give me a break. Oh, my it, goodness. It's, it's irritating, man. I say, dude. you think it's all crap? Go out. Let's go out. Yep. I'll take you camping and, you know, you can't guarantee anything, but you never know. You might have stuff change your mind so 
you just got you got to be open to it for sure um do you uh are you a, a big reader of uh of bigfoot books or um <laughs> i used to be okay uh lately you know the last few years uh not so much but i still collect a lot of books oh cool uh do you have any uh recommendations uh, i always like to ask uh guests if they have you know there's there's some that are, are repeated, but uh, I'm just it's curious. It's going to be the repeats. It's going to be the repeats. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah Meldrum's book, uh, right. Krantz's book, John Green. Um, you know, they recommended it today. It's, I think, Michael May's book from the NOAC. You know, oh, Area yeah. X. The new one. He just released a book, I think, last week. Yep. It's in my card. I just haven't bought it yet. <laughs> Chris, I think he said it's three chapters in, and he said it's great. Wow. So, because he says it doesn't start out with the guy trying to explain why these things could be real or, you know, trying to explain what they are. It just goes straight into, this is what's going on. This is what we found. And it's kind of hard to me. Wow. I don't need people to tell me this is what people think these things are, or this, this is what we think could happen. I'm right past all that. Oh yeah, totally. I like, I know more than these people writing. I want a book. I want a book. So yeah. That's wild. Do you, uh, so you've been all over the place in California. You've been Washington, uh, of yeah. course, you know, Pacific Northwest. Is there a place that you would like to go squatching in that you haven't gotten the chance to yet? And you're just trying to make the connection or like a bucket list type thing. I would love to go to area X with no act. Dude, I know. Right. I know some people in, in no act and I've never approached them about it, but if I was ever on vacation or, or heading towards Oklahoma or Texas, that's on my bucket list for sure yep oh man to get into that area and research with some of those guys because i have a lot of respect for some of those guys just from a cess film and knowing them um, seeing what they do on facebook or um their writings their thoughts on it because i the the way they think about it even um op isn't pro kill I was mm -hmm. pro kill for years and then okay. I came around. I'm not pro kill anymore myself. Okay. I, okay. I just don't care. I don't care to bring one in myself. I think it's an ego mm. thing. Um, okay. Even though I think that's what has to happen for science. I'm not the person right. to do it. Um, like a lot of their thoughts and the stuff they've done in NOAC, I, I have a lot of respect for. So that that's my bucket list. I'd love to go there. That's awesome. Yeah, so, uh, you know, if those guys are listening, make it happen. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they are. Um, yeah. <laughs> that that would be so legit. I mean, just I think I was talking to Kathy Strain once, and the story she had of that place, oh, my goodness. It's like, yeah. it feels like there's whole troops of Bigfoot in there. It's wild. So wild. Um, I met Kath, I met Kathy in 2008 at that first. Oh, event I went yeah, to yeah. And Boston okay. Train. I've yeah. known them for, I guess, 14 years now. Wow. So, mm. yeah. So we, we're talking about the, the uh, NAWAC guys. Uh, and, you know, they've come out with a different, you know, publications, etc. Is there, uh, and if you can't talk about it, you can't talk about it, but uh, are there plans for like uh, uh, for the OP to to release, you know, uh, uh, findings that you guys have put together? Or is that just not the the um, the really the goal of the group to spend time doing that? Not that I'm aware of. Um, OK, I haven't heard any talk about that. No. No sweat, no sweat. No, I don't have any answer for that because no, I, nothing that I've heard from Shane or Derek. Because oh, cool. Yeah, I'd like D Derek speak on if you if you have Derek on, you can ask him about any of that kind of stuff. He's on the list, which is like you have the list is so long, Todd. 
some people are like, dude, you're oh, going to sure. run out of people to interview. It's like, no, I'm not. I could go forever. And I would, <laughs> I just have like at least 50 to 60, 50 to 60 people that um, I would want to have on. Those are the ones oh, that would awesome. say yes. You know, so that's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. When it comes to the stuff I'm doing and the public, I pretty much keep to myself as far as Bigfoot goes. Gotcha. Yep. Um, typically post more pictures. It's the best with my research. I don't know if you've noticed, but you know, racing. So no, <laughs> I mean, I just, <clears throat> just go with the flow. Ask me a question. I'll answer it. No, there you go. There you go. Todd, it has been, uh, it's been a fun time chatting with you tonight. Do you mind, uh, taking a few minutes just to, to remind listeners of how they can keep up to date with, uh, you know, what you're doing through the Olympic project and, and all that good stuff. Um, I, I guess you go to the website, olympicproject.com yep. and, um, I don't even know if I'm actually on there, but <laughs> you can go, you can hit up Shane on Facebook, Derek on Facebook, uh, the Instagram, Twitter, all the usual social media type of stuff. Um, me, myself, I have people hit me up once in a while, but um, I'm more in the background. I gotcha. I know, I know you're a background I like guy. It. I don't like being in the forefront. Yep. At the, yeah. But uh, I appreciate you coming on. I know it's your background guy, but I, I still feel you've got a cool story to tell. So I, I appreciate you coming on, Todd. Thank you. All right. Well, Todd is going to hang out a little bit uh, longer for to talk with uh, some of the Patreon members. But uh, thanks again so much for coming on, Todd, and have a good night. Sure. All right, man. Thanks for having me. Real quick announcement before we head out. Uh, I've got the opportunity of going on my first Bigfoot expedition at the end of July. Currently, I'm uh, trying to raise money to buy gear for that. If you want to specifically support Bigfoot Society and, uh, you know, as I go into my first Bigfoot expedition, uh, feel free to do that by going over to the Bigfoot Society Etsy page and buying a t-shirt over there. That will help fund my gear for that expedition. Uh, you can also join the uh, Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Bigfoot Society forward slash the Bigfoot Society. I'm about to talk to that talk about that again in a few minutes. But uh, that's where you'll be able to see, I'll be putting some interviews uh, from that expedition. Plan is to put some extra content directly from that uh, expedition into the Patreon. So definitely uh, support the podcast through there as well. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the Bigfoot Society podcast. Please take a few minutes to review the show on iTunes five stars as it does help us get into the eyes and ears of more listeners on iTunes. Uh, that will help us just get bigger and bigger and get even better quality guests for future shows. Uh, also, if you have any Bigfoot encounters or cryptid encounters, please send your stories and uh, audio and photos, whatever you've got, over to BigfootSociety at gmail.com. If you'd like to become more involved with Bigfoot Society and get some extra content, we do have a Patreon uh, where you can get all sorts of cool things. For example, for $7 a month, you get extra Bigfoot Society content, uh, usually interviews, but other things as well. You get a sweet membership card and a vinyl sticker that I send to you in the mail. You get access to the Bigfoot Society After Show, which is an extra interview after the main interview with the weekly guest. And usually they are up for uh, Patreon members to be in that extra show segment with them and me. And you get to ask your uh, question live to them and get an answer from the guest, which as you've seen what guests we've had in the past, this could be a really big deal. There's also a private Discord where you can get involved with uh, talking to me one-on-one -on -one and the community there, and that's always a great time. You can find the Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society. 
Uh, we're very thankful for all our supporters that we have in so many different ways and appreciate uh, all our listeners coming back week after week to listen to more cryptozoology-based interviews. Uh, thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. The views and opinions expressed are those of the guest and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Bigfoot Society. Any content provided by our guests are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone. Thank you.